This is Tuesday, January the 12th. This is American history. Well, during the time of Cleveland, more and more Americans are starting to join unions. They're either joining industrial unions, that's where everybody has the same type of job in that industry, or they're going into trade unions. Trade unions is where everybody has the same skill. But both industrial unions and trade unions are going to discriminate. They are not going to allow blacks to enter either union. They are not going to allow immigrants, <coughs> recently arrived immigrants, to join either union. To combat discrimination, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP for short, is going to be created in the late 19th century. The NAACP is going to work through the courts to gain rights for black workers. We had said in the Gilded Age that there were problems in the cities. Now, we might as well write a note to ourselves that government is not going to solve the problem. The Republicans and Democrats both believed it was not their problem to solve the problems of the city. Now, to solve the problems, we are going to look first to private organizations. One is the Salvation Army. The Salvation Army began in Great Britain about the time of the American Civil War, but quickly it spread to the United States. Now, the Salvation Army is going to help the poor, going to help the destitute, from a Christian point of view. If you go to the Salvation Army, they have Christian services, they have amenities, you can get a meal, you can spend the night, but most of all, they are there to help out the poor and the destitute. Settlement houses. A settlement house is a private home that is owned by a fairly well-to-do person who then is going to provide services that the poor people cannot afford. One was Jane Addams in Chicago, and she started Hull House. Now, Hull House had places where mothers could get their babies to be washed and to be looked at by doctors. Hull House is going to have a place where children could spend the afternoon when they got done with school. Hull House is going to help out those who need help with reading, writing, arithmetic. Here is a short video on Hull House. Now, the YMCA and the YWC, Young Men and Young Women's Christian Association, these were places that were aimed at those young people, those who were in their teens and early 20s. They would sponsor classes on how to speak English. They would have rooms that you could rent. If you wanted to spend some time in the city and you had no place to stay. On the farms, we have the Grange. <clears throat> now, the Grange is the brainchild of Oliver Carroll, Carey. <coughs> Excuse me. Oliver Kelly from Iowa. Now, the Grange is designated to be a social place. At the Grange, you can go and you can uh, play cards. You can play checkers. It is a place that will hold dances. It is a place that will have horseshoe pitching contests. It is a place where farmers can hang out. Now, the Grange was very popular in the Midwest, and the Grange was very popular in the South. But anytime you get a bunch of farmers together, they're going to talk about politics, and they're going to talk about the common enemy of most farmers, which is the railroads. Now, once the Grange people began to talk about what they would do if they could get elected, or who they should elect, or who they should nominate. Now when we get into politics, 
the organization begins to change its name to Alliance. So in our notes, the Grange is a social institution, and Alliance is a political institution. Now, you most likely will belong to both. In the South, we are going to see the destruction of cotton plants. Now, so much of the South had invested money in the cotton plant. And several years after the Civil War, a beetle called a boll weevil is going to infest the cotton crops. It's going to eat the flour of the cotton crop, and without the flour, you are not going to get any cotton balls. Now, various public universities are now going to look at other crops southern farmers can grow besides cotton. Congress is going to appropriate money for the buildings of schools dedicated to what are we going to grow in the South. These are generally referred to as agriculture and military schools. Now there were quite a few. Texas A&M, the A&M still stands for agriculture and military, is probably one of the biggest. But Louisiana had one, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, all of them had agriculture and military schools. In most cases, they dropped the A&M and went to simply the name of the state and then the word state. But Congress did not fund black universities at the same rate. And it is in the Gilded Age that many are asking themselves, what is the role of blacks in American culture? Are they first-class citizens? Are they second-class citizens? What are they supposed to do for society? Now, blacks made up the largest minority group in the United States. They made up 10%. But in most states, they were considered second-class citizens. Well, what exactly are blacks going to do about this? Enter Booker T. Washington. Now, Booker T. Washington was a man who was born a slave and is going to be educated by benevolent whites and by educating himself. Booker T. Washington is going to propose that blacks develop a trade, a skill, and that this skill will make them indispensable to the white community. The white community will have to give them their due because the blacks have a trade. Now, Washington is going to ignore the call for blacks to get the right to vote. Instead, Washington is going to suggest to Congress that money be appropriated to teach blacks a skill. Here is a quick biography on Booker T. Washington. With this in mind, many benevolent whites are going to start universities in the South dedicated for the teaching of skills to young black men. One is Tuskegee in Alabama. And Tuskegee is going to be run by Booker T. Washington. He becomes, it becomes pretty much the flagship of what black schools should be about. Enter George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was born a slave in Diamond, Missouri that is in extreme southwest Missouri. Carver is going to go to Iowa where he is going to enter college and get a degree in biology. Carver is going to go to Tuskegee and Carver is going to begin to come up with new uses for the peanut. Carver becomes so popular that many times whites will sneak into Tuskegee at night and ask Carver to show them how to use the peanut. 
Now, these schools that are started for agriculture become known as land-grant colleges. Now, Mizzou was a land-grant college in the 1830s. Uh, places like Kansas State and Kansas University, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, these were colleges that were considered land-grant colleges and begun in the Gilded Age. We learned in a previous lesson that many whites are going to be offered 500 acres of land out in the American West, this would be on the prairie, to make their own. This becomes known as the Homestead Act. And it is during the Gilded Age that more land is going to be given away. These farmers who are coming into the Great Plains are now going to come into conflict with ranchers. Ranchers are people who believe that they want to use the land to graze cows. I think this would probably be a pretty good place for us to stop. A reminder that today we have a little bit of a shortened schedule because we have an all-school mass. Remember to do the walkout worksheet at the end of this video.